You may be surprised to learn that the reef in Destiny is actually a real place. It's located in the asteroid belt that sits in between Mars and Jupiter. In fact, the Awoken base, the Vestian outpost, is located on one of the largest asteroids, named Vesta. The Fallen House of Wolves also made their home on one of the asteroids, the largest one, Ceres. And during the Reef Wars, the Awoken Queen destroyed Ceres with her Harbingers. It's awesome that the history of Destiny even affects the asteroid belt. Although I'm sure you don't really know the Reef for its history or its accuracy, instead, you probably know the Reef as one of the truly unique places in Destiny because of the majestic purple light that filters throughout the area. Can an area like this actually exist somewhere in the solar system? To figure that out, we have to dig into the most physics-heavy episode of Game Connections yet. To start off, we need to understand a few things about light. Light is a form of energy and travels in a wave. The distance between the crest of the waves is called the wavelength, and the wavelength of light determines its energy. Shorter wavelengths have higher energy, and longer wavelengths have less energy. There's a small section of light that we can see, and we call this visible light. It's essentially the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, all of which combine to form white light. Now the color of visible light is directly connected to its energy. Violet and blue light have shorter wavelengths and high energy, and orange and red have longer wavelengths and lower energy. So knowing that, we can determine the light in the reef is a high energy light since it's violet. Now the reason the reef glows violet has to do with the thick clouds that drift through the area. Astronomers call clouds like these nebulae, and depending on the makeup of the nebula, it affects light in different ways. When a cloud is primarily made up of gas, it can emit its own light, but for that to happen, it needs to receive a high amount of energy from a nearby star. Which, no offense to the sun, but it doesn't produce enough energy to cause that to happen. Instead, the cloud in the reef is likely a reflection nebula, which isn't made up of gas, but made up of a ton of dust. As the light moves through the dust cloud, it gets scattered by the particles. The dust sends the light in other directions. It's a process called Rayleigh scattering. How strongly the light gets scattered largely depends on the energy of the light. High energy light with short wavelengths scatters more easily, while low energy light with long wavelengths travels through pretty much unhindered. If we remember earlier from light, violet light has the highest energy and the shortest wavelength. So when it travels through the dust cloud, it gets scattered the strongest. With all the violet light being thrown around by the dust, it causes the area to radiate a pale violet color. And that's how the reef gets its iconic glow. So that's the explanation, or theory rather, but that leaves some questions. Like, how come we can't see the asteroid belt glow in real life? And that light scattering thing happens on Earth. Why isn't the Earth's sky violet like the reefs? Well, the reason the asteroid belt doesn't glow in real life, quite simply, is because there isn't a nebula in it. Contrary to popular belief, the asteroid belt isn't tightly packed full of particles like Saturn's rings are, but instead it's mostly empty. There are many miles between large asteroids, and the small ones in between are usually too small to discern. There just isn't enough dust to reflect any kind of light from the sun. So understanding that, the question then turns to, where did the nebula and destiny come from? Well, the Awoken may have created the nebula themselves. I mentioned earlier that the Awoken destroyed the dwarf planet Ceres during the Reef Wars. The destruction of the most massive body in the asteroid belt may have created enough debris to create the reflection nebula that now sits in between Mars and Jupiter. Or maybe something else happened, we don't know. But that nebula is here now and it creates a wonderful view. The scattering of light particles also takes place on Earth in the upper atmosphere. That's why the sky is blue. As light comes in, the high energy blue light scatters, while the rest of the light goes right on through. But since violet has a higher wavelength, shouldn't the sky be violet? Well, there's a few factors that prevent this. First is that the sun doesn't really produce a lot of violet light. It actually peaks in the green part of the visible spectrum, so there isn't much violet to see. Secondly, any violet light it does produce is usually absorbed by molecules in the upper atmosphere, so there's even less to see. 
Lastly, it has to do with our anatomy. Humans have evolved to see certain wavelengths of light better than others. We are more sensitive to the blue and white light coming from the sun than the strongly scattered but very faint violet light. And that's basically why the sky is blue. However, out in the Vestian outpost, there is no atmosphere to absorb the violet light, so its strong scattering actually makes it visible to humans. So that's a rough explanation of why the reef appears violet in Destiny. Now before I finish up, there's one more thing I'd like to mention. I brought up the anatomy of humans as a reason why we couldn't see violet in Earth's sky. But we don't play through Destiny as just humans. Being out on the fringe of the asteroid belt, the Awoken may have evolved a new way to see light. Maybe they see light in different ways than humans do. Maybe they see a few new colors. Maybe they see colors differently. But EXO are machines. There's no limit to what they can see. We have telescopes now that can see wavelengths of light that humans can't. Maybe the EXO can see colors that we can't even dream to see. The universe is probably a really beautiful place in their eyes. Thank you for watching and see you later! Mercury is the smallest planet in our solar system and the one closest to the sun. Interestingly, of the inner planets, Mercury is the only one without a patrol area.